than land. So when we take a look at this, what do you see? Well, we definitely see extensive decay from six through 11. Just clinically looking at this photo, we can see that the oral hygiene um, is not the most ideal. Uh, our guess, even before taking the history, would be some type of drug use just based uh, on the extensive uh, nature of this uh, decay on these teeth. We take a look at the occlusal aspect and we can see the extensive decay on the anterior teeth. We see some uh, decay on the posteriors. And again, we see the oral hygiene is not as ideal as we would like. In the lower arch, we see some extensive decay in the posterior teeth. In the anteriors, we see quite a bit of tartar and some buildup. So these are usually the photos that we capture for every new patient. And so when we capture these photos, the first thing is these are put up on the screen in the operatory. So usually these patients will look at this and go, wow, are those my teeth? Uh, I didn't realize that they're that bad. Well, this patient did realize they were pretty bad and she was uh, finally in quite a bit of discomfort. So she wanted to get this addressed. She wanted to get this addressed quickly and she wanted to be um, sedated because she was severely apprehensive. So our goal was to try to stay within her budget. Her mom and dad were going to be helping her out with the cost of this treatment. And so we're gonna go through step by step. What would be your treatment plan? Well, let's take a look at the 2D X-ray or 2D panoramic view. We can see that number one needs to be removed. Number 16 needs to be removed as well as 17. We look at tooth number 31, which has extensive decay. So that I would also recommend being removed in addition to tooth number 32. So already we know that five teeth need to be extracted for sure. If we take a look at the anterior teeth, our goal is to try to save these because there's very thin bone um, and to postpone implant placement. I'm sure in the future she may need to go that route, but because of uh, how young she is, our goal was to try to save these teeth and buy her some time. So our goal was to do root canal therapy for six through 11. We also could see uh, multiple areas where restorative dentistry needed to be done. So we see a variety of areas where we would do restorative dentistry and do uh, MO or MOD uh, type restorations. Looking at the 3D view, we're taking a closer look at the wisdom teeth in addition to the second molar in the number 31 area. And notice the areas where teeth were already extracted had quite a bit of bone loss. So those were not the most ideal areas to place implants without grafting. So the treatment plan that we came up with for this particular patient was the extraction of tooth 1, 16, 17, 31, and 32, root canal and core 6 through 11, place zirconia crown restorations from 5 to 12, do the necessary restorations on any of the teeth that were indicated, and then also do some scaling and root planing um, and uh, a cleaning for her. So this is sort of what we're starting with. Our patient sedated, and so our goal is to go ahead and remove all the decay. Here you can see we use the split rubber dam technique, and we're gonna go ahead and just remove all the decay as much as possible. And as you see, as we start to remove more and more uh, tooth decay, you can see the teeth are almost like an eggshell. Uh, so our goal is to definitely remove all the uh, carious uh, tooth structure that's remaining. And so we continue that. In fact, taking the round burr all the way down to um, the gum line to the free gingival margin, you can see our rubber dam separated. Well, since we had a throat pack and I didn't wanna keep replacing the rubber dam, we continued with our throat pack and started endodontic uh, therapy. And so here you can see we're getting our working length. And so one uh, device that you can use if you don't already have an apex indicator 
is the Woodpecker Apex Indicator. And so this is a very nice uh, device that allows you to very quickly get the working length as we're going through six teeth. Um, so the anterior six teeth, we're root canaling. However, we're prepping uh, the anterior eight teeth. And so if you already um, have uh, some type of endo handpiece, this works well to be able to get the uh, apex identified. The Golden Den Endo uh, Taper system works very, very well. This is very similar to Pro Taper or Pro Taper Gold. So you have the shaping and finishing uh, rotary files, but the Woodpecker Endo motor, which is wireless, is definitely something that everybody needs to try. Um, it's called AI motor, uh, which is like an artificial intelligence, I would say, because of some of the uh, nice gadgets that are built into this. If you want it as an apex indicator, there is a built-in apex indicator if you decide to use just this handpiece. Um, so you don't need the separate apex indicator as I illustrated. I wanted to illustrate both for those doctors who may have one or the other. Um, but essentially what we try to do is our shaping um, with the um, files, we're usually going about 350 to 400 RPM with about three Newton centimeters for the shaping. And then the finishing, we're usually going in a range of 1.5 to three Newton centimeters of torque uh, as we do the finishing. So it works identical to a Pro Taper or Pro Taper Gold, um, but probably I'd say one third the cost. Here's some of the highlights of the Woodpecker Endo Motor uh, available through Golden Dent. Number one, it's got a, um, a contra angle that you can rotate 360 degrees. So if you have those areas where it's hard to reach, you can literally just rotate the head of the handpiece. It's got a six to one contra angle and the head of the woodpecker is actually quite small and slim. So it allows you to get into the posterior areas. Most importantly, um, it's a brushless motor. Um, so you'll, if you uh, get a chance to use one, you'll find that it's a very smooth output um, creating a very nice torque. If you um, are using something outside of uh, a pro taper type of file, there's, uh, I think there's about 12 different um, settings, uh, whether you're using endo sequence, pro taper, um, any of the, uh, uh, any of the uh, files that you're comfortable with, you can actually set it to these uh, different settings. Most importantly, again, you do have a built-in apex indicator in there. Um, you do have to put the little hook on the lip and then the other uh, part of the wire actually goes right into the endo handpiece and you have a quick apex indicator. So this works very, very well. Uh, I definitely recommend taking a look at the Golden Dent website so you can see how this functions. So we use the Golden Taper Rotary File System again. And so we're just gonna go through our sequence here you can see exactly the sequence we're using. You can see uh, because of the severe amount of decay at the gum line, uh, our rubber dam snapped. So we went ahead and just used uh, our throat pack um, to isolate the area. And so we're gonna go through first the shaping files, and then we're gonna use our finishing files. And so here you can see we've removed uh, the majority of the decay. We're gonna go ahead and go through our file system. Once we've filed through the whole system, we're gonna go ahead and use our paper point, points to uh, dry the canals. And we'll use a single cone. And here we have the sealer that we're using from Diadent. This is called Dia Pro Seal. Um, it has excellent sealing ability. It's essentially a two component epoxy resin based system. It's got great adhesion to gutta percha and dentin. It's got very good flow. So I'll usually use a lentilo and uh, spiral that into the canal. It's got a high pH value. It's got an excellent antimicrobial activity. It's uh, got low solubility, so it's not gonna degrade. It's very uh, highly biocompatible. So if you had a little sealer that 
was expressed out the apex, it's not gonna create a problem. And most importantly, it's got excellent radio opacity. So when you look at it on an X-ray, you see that it's radio opaque. So once we've done our endo, our goal is to remove some of the gutta percha. Usually we're going about two thirds down the canal. Um, so we wanna uh, leave about a third of the gutta percha for the apical seal. And so this is um, the Glassex Plus from Norden, who is distributed also from Golden Dent. And so here you can see, we're just measuring and making sure that we have the appropriate length and the appropriate sizes to build these teeth up. And so we're gonna go ahead and cement these in with Maxim Elite, which is a self-etch, self-adhesive resin cement. This is from Kerr. This is my go-to for the fiber post. And then we're gonna use the Wago Kerr uh, Wago Core, excuse me, zirconium infused composite buildup. So you all may remember the Wago Fill, which is a zirconium infused composite restoration. And so in the development of this, we decided let's go with a white opaque shade so we can clearly tell where the core is, have the zirconia um, silica particles in there so it's going to provide strength and radio opacity and just do an incremental uh, buildup and uh, curing of three to four millimeters of depth. And so here you can see our buildup with the fiber posts. We've prepared the uh, teeth. And so with the wax up, you also get a clear template and the hole on the facial, lingual and incisal aspects are so that you can measure with a probe to uh, ensure that you have accurate reduction. Our goal then is to take impressions. Here's the Panasil, uh, heavy and light from Kettenbach. And so we took an impression. We took our bite. We already have the opposing arch. And then using this temporary material also from Kettenbach, we fabricated uh, provisional restoration. So again, this is all being done in one visit while the patient is sedated. When the patient presented three weeks postoperatively, you can see her gums healed a little, a little bit. Um, and so our goal was to go ahead and anesthetize and remove the provisional restorations, clean the restorations of any temporary cement, and then cement these crown restorations once they've been verified for appropriate fit and occlusion. And so the Nexus RMGI, which is the resin modified glass anomer from Kerr, is a really nice one. Uh, two other cements that uh, you can use as well that I, I like as well is Fujisem from GC, um, and then Reliax is also another good one from 3M. And so this is immediately after cleanup. And so being able to take your patient from A to Z really allows you to be able to provide comprehensive dentistry for your patients um, and to be able to restore them. Mm -hmm.